order. I now recognize myself for a first round of questioning. Mr. Williams, you're a career uh, employee, right? You came up through the ranks. And uh, what did you make in 2002, if you recall? What did I make in 2002? Yes, sir. I, I don't know that off the top of my head. I'd have to follow up with you. Give me a year, more than more than five years ago, what you made. Again, Congressman, off the top of my head, I don't have that. Talk. What was your starting pay when you uh, came? Uh, Congressman, I would imagine it was probably around 115000 Yeah, would you speak up Certainly. a little, please? Congressman, I would imagine it was around 115000 when I joined the company over 20 years ago. Okay. So... 20 years ago, you came with an organization that paid you $15,000, right? Organization that paid you $15,000, right? I came with $115,000. $115,000. So they, they paid you more then than they paid congressmen. That, that hasn't changed. I, I would assume so. But less than the president. He was still making 400000 or 200000 perhaps back then. Uh, well, let's, let's sort of go through the numbers. You don't remember what you made 10 years ago, but you remember roughly 115000 when you started. When did you first make over a million dollars? Everybody, let me rephrase that. I had the luxury of making over a million dollars. I exactly remember the year I made over a million dollars. I'm sure you do. What year did you first have compensation, including bonus, that put you over a million dollars? Congressman, I'm not sure when, what year that was. So money is not that important to you? No, money Money is important to all of us who are here today, sir. That's okay. But you're a career government agency employee. GSC is a government agency, effectively. Congressman, I've been an employee at Fannie Mae for 20 years, serving in a vast array of roles, beginning in technology all the way through to chief operating officer. Okay. Well, I don't want to beat the dead horse, but you came out at 115000 to an organization backed by the government that had a pay scale. Did you ever have an expectation that you were going to uh, make not just seven figures, but several of them, that you'd make eight or nine million every two years? Congressman, I think we all hope to aspire to advance in our careers and advance our compensation as we do. Okay, but you made $9.3 million in the last two years. Well, the president made $800,000. Do you think that's, that's okay? Congressman, I've been brought in and asked to take on this role as CEO so that I can put in place a management team that can help achieve the goals of conservatorship, which is stabilize the company, provide liquidity to the market, and help start... Okay, but, but you're still losing money. You've taken $90 billion, and you're getting $9 million a year. Uh, let me go on to Mr. Alderman. Now, Bloomberg and other organizations were concerned when you came on board because you don't come with a background like Mr. Williams does. Basically, you're not qualified to run the organization if one were to look at your historic resume. That was a concern, but you did come out of the private sector. Hopefully you remember, what did you make the last year you were at Putnam? I don't I don't recall. Did you make more than a million dollars? Yes, I did. Was your compensation tied to performance? Yes, it was. Was it tied tightly to performance in which you could literally look at the yields of accounts or the profits of the organization in order to determine what your perform what your bonus would be? It was it was tied to the performance of the funds. It was tied to the economic performance of the company, and I had equity participation as well. Now, equity participation always assumes that the stock goes up, right? It doesn't always. No, it it happened to. During my tenure, it does. So your, your options were worthless if your stock went up or went, went down. That would be correct. Okay, so at, at Freddie Mac, has your stock gone up? In uh, my tenure, it has not gone Okay, up. I just want to make sure that uh, $7.8 million over the last two years is based on a company who is not worth more today. As a matter of fact, just for the record, uh, if I were to look at the net profits uh, for Fannie Mae from uh, 2000 to 2010, I'd find the net profits were a $10 billion, $11 billion loss. At Freddie Mac, I would find a $72 billion net loss over that same period of nearly a decade. So including the time before you came in in which the books were being effectively cooked by taking in bad 
debt uh, that was going to go bad, but in fact, putting it on, there were paper profits of four and five million dollars. But over that period of time, you're, you're on an organization that certainly lost 14 billion in 2010 and is going to lose equally or more this year. So that's the organization you're running for four billion, four million dollars a year. Is that right? Yes, we have lost money due to loans that were put on the books during the period. 2005. To okay, about. my time has expired. I just want to get one last thing in for the record. Mr. DeMarco, from what I can tell, your $230,000 salary is all you get, right? Yes, sir. All I get is my, is my salary. And you do stay for that menial amount of money for some unknown reason, even though you could make money elsewhere? I'm still here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. DeMarco. Recognize the ranking member. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. DeMarco. tell you, Mr. Alderman and Mr. Williams, you all come from a different world than the one I come from. If I had made a million dollars, I sure wouldn't know when I made it, that's for sure. But um, Mr. DeMarco, I want to just go to performance, because as I listen to Mr. Williams and Mr. Hart and Alderman, I don't remember hearing the word performance. I may have heard it, but I don't remember hearing it. Um, you said in your testimony that part of the compensation these executives receive is based on their performance. But with all due respect, their performance and yours has been severely deficient, especially in the area of assisting homeowners. In 2008, Congress and the President directed you to help homeowner, homeowners in need. Congress passed the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act, and the President signed it on October 3, 2008. The act states clearly that FHFA, Freddie Mac, and Fannie Mae and I quote, shall implement a plan that seeks to maximize assistance for homeowners. In your testimony today, you confirmed this is one of your three goals, did you not? I did. Um, but I have uh, seen no plan to do this. Uh, what I have seen is an agency that basically has to be dragged to do uh, its work by the Congress. Uh, let's look at performance. HAMP, the Home Affordable Modification Program, was supposed to help three and uh, four million homeowners modify their loans. So far, it has helped fewer than 800,000. Is that true? I believe that's correct for the HAMP program. It's not a correct reflection of the loan modification activity of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So, with regard to HARP, the Home Affordable Finance Refinance Program, that was supposed to help uh, between four and five million borrowers refinance at low rates. So far, fewer than 900,000 have been refinance. Is that, is that right? There have been uh, over 900,000 HARP refinances uh, to date. And uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Cummings, from the changes that we've made to that program uh, recently, we're expecting an uptick in that uh, meaningful amount. Of course we are, but we're talking about what we've done to date. These gentlemen, they're making this money now. Not, 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 not yes. you know, tomorrow. Don't talk about today. So I'm looking at performance now. Um, Mr. DeMarco, it was not until President, uh, President Obama made an address to Congress on this topic that you started to revamp this program in a serious way. And let's look at uh, HAFA. Uh, just for the record, Mr. Cummings, I actually had directed both companies to work with FHFA on uh, a thorough re-exam.